Yeah, I'm Elliot Dodson. I'm born in Norfolk, Virginia. My parents brought me to South Carolina when I was two years old, and we lived in Greenwood for about a year and a half, and we moved to Columbia, and I grew up in Columbia, went to the first uh, high school drill when drill just opened up, and uh, we, we had to go over to uh, the uh, old uh, women's college that was still open uh, for our first year, and then we went there the second year to drill, and we finished uh, uh, when we were just in the 11th grade. I have 12 grades now, but anyhow. Uh, so I uh, finished uh, high school in uh, 1940, and uh, 41, and uh, no, 1940, and I went to Clemson College, and uh, was there three years, and in 42, uh, we had to sign up uh, for uh, military. And they uh, put us in the sort of a AASTP program for a little bit. And uh, then eventually in 1943, I had to go to uh, basic training. And I got to be a PFC, finally there. And then uh, uh, they, because we had had ROTC training at Clemson, they said, you have an opportunity to go to Fort Benning and worked for a commission, which I did, and a number of others from Clemson were there, too. And so we were called cannon fodder, and uh, this was <laughs> 90 day wonders. So uh, uh, we got through, and I was sent out to Oklahoma to join the 42nd uh, Rainbow Division. And they had been very you know, famous in World War I with Douglas MacArthur. But anyhow, uh, Harry Collins was the general, uh, major general of the, uh, the, uh, of the 42nd Division. And so uh, in 1943, well, I guess I went there in 42, but in 43, we went, 44, we went over to uh, uh, Mar Marseille, France. And that had all, uh, 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 Clark had ordered, General Clark had already been through with his Seventh Army and moved through that. So, so we went in the same area that the, he had gone in on and, and joined in the fighting up towards Strasbourg, France. And uh, uh, a little while after we had gotten there, the bulge broke out in Belgium. So. Uh, Clark had to send about three of his divisions up there to help out, and because we, we were short chains down there, we had to get out of Strasbourg and move back. Well, General de Gaulle was very unhappy about that because uh, he was afraid that Hitler was going to come back and take it, and Hitler, the radio was Hitler's radio was saying, "Yes, we're going to go in." So. Uh, he, uh, he was such a burden on Eisenhower, Eisenhower said, all right, go ahead and go back into uh, get Strasbourg, which he did. The French First Army went back there and got it. So then we joined the, uh, them in Strasbourg, and then uh, as, uh, we moved out up several places in France and eventually crossed over the Rhine River and was fighting from there on up through uh, uh, Swineford and, uh, and, and all those towns up the main river and got to uh, Munich. And at that time, and we went to Dachau first of all and released the prisoners in Dachau. And it was a terrible thing there. But anyhow, um, then we went on to Munich and that was getting close to uh, war being over. And by the time we got up to Salzburg, Austria, uh, the uh, Hitler had uh, given up. And the word we had was he, go he was going to Berchtesgaden and try to stand up there. So we headed for Berchtesgaden, but then they found out that he had been killed 
and uh, Berlin. So the war was over. So uh, we stayed, went into occupation and uh, we were transferred from Kitzbühel, which was a beautiful place in the mountains and the uh, Austrian and Alps there. Uh, but the French took over that uh, area and we went to Vienna and to Salzburg. So the division headquarters was in Salzburg and uh, it was so uh, helpful to the Salzburg city because we wanted to cooperate with them to get their music um, uh, festival back again. Hitler had cut it out and the Salzburg festival had been so uh, popular for years. So we helped the uh, citizens to restruct the buildings. They'd been bombed out a lot of them and helped them get instruments and singers and musicians and so on. And we got them back to the first festival after the uh, war. And it was a good thing. We were enjoying it. So about that time, and toward the, the war had been over about three months, and my mother wrote me and said, your father has been ill throughout the year, your years over there, and uh, we worked at the Red Cross to get you home. He's very ill. <laughs> so at the end, I went home in January of 45. And uh, I was able to be with him about three or four months before he died, at age 50. And my mother lived on to age 96 and didn't remarry. But anyhow, uh, that was my wall. I went in, I had a, I had a mortal platoon in the, in the 222nd Regiment of the 42nd Division. and. Um, my jeep driver, oh no, one of my sergeants, had gone right away to this, we were in the, in the, in the city, and uh, the, he had been over to Dachau, and our troops had gone in there and opened the gates, and the ones that were still alive uh, just streamed out into the city, breaking into buildings, getting food, and they had to round them up bring them back just to hold them there, to, to give them a uh, Red Cross and, uh, yes, and, and feed them. So that was a, sort of an organizing there, but uh, when my sergeant came back and told me about it, the bodies, and I, 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 I can show you some pictures if you want to see it on this, of, a, of the deaths there. And so I said, I'm not going. I, I, I don't know what's going on there. I don't want to see it. So I didn't go, but uh, I got some uh, pictures of it. Uh, and uh, so when we moved on up to uh, uh, Munich and the war was over. I got in reserves and I stayed in 20 years, got out, was retired from reserves in 64. So it's been, it was a great, uh, I wasn't called back in for active duty, so it was, it was just a wonderful thing because here I qualify for all the military uh, goodies. And uh, quite often we, we travel on space available. And we just go down to Charleston, wait for something to come in, and if we can get a seat on it, we, we go. So we've done quite a bit of this and it's very enjoyable. And I can go to commissars. And, so we can stay in military housing, which can give us a nice vacation. I came back as a, I was a bachelor, so uh, in uh, 40, let's see, uh, 40, about 46, 7 or 8, or I forget, I should remember this, I married a, a girl from, uh, who was working in Columbia at the Presbyterian Church as his secretary, and we got to going together. and. Uh, we were married, I think, around in 48. She was the daughter of a Presbyterian minister up in the Greer, South Carolina area. And they had five daughters. And she was about the middle daughter. And they'd all have to go to church with their mother, five girls, 
on the front rows of the church and sit there where she loved to, to get the others laughing. So they were talking about, she's telling them about the guy of the choir is going to sleep watching and they got to giggling and her father stopped the sermon and stared at her where she felt like two cents. He said, and the rest of her life, when she would go to church, she would just tighten up. Because it just is so, <laughs> so a lot of times when we got married, I don't think I want to go this morning. <laughs> but anyhow, we got married, we had three children, uh, two boys and a girl. And uh, it, it, was a, it was a good family. We, the, the children turned out so well and they were so loving and they always have been, still are. We were in the, uh, Penn State at, in Pennsylvania. Uh, after we got married, uh, I worked as an engineer and I found myself back in Columbia trying to rescue my father's company and I thought I could be a hero but I hated the stuff so anyhow. While I was there, a, a friend of mine who was head of the mechanical engineering department at the University of South Carolina said, Edward, could you come and help me at nighttime? I'm getting a lot of surplus equipment. We want to fix the lab up. And I got some people, the veterans that are coming in and want to take some courses at nighttime. I said, well, I've tried. And so he was called a silver streak. He was a guy that then rode his bike everywhere. So they called him a silver streak. But anyhow, uh, we, I helped him and I started teaching that, uh, one of his classes. <clears throat> and I said, uh, uh, I said, uh, what is the name of? And I told him I, I, I enjoyed this. He said, Elliot, if you want to enjoy it and want to go into it, you've got to get another degree. So I got in touch with my Dean Earl at Clemson. And he said, yeah, you can go up to Penn State. I got a friend there in the research department, and I, you can get to work and make enough money to pay your tuition. So my wife and I, uh, well, actually, we went up to, uh, to before that to, uh, to see about teaching. I went to the Brevard, and the Brevard College at that time, uh, and then became a university there. But anyhow, I went to Brevard College for a year, and. Uh, I taught a bunch of different courses, but I enjoyed it. There were actually two or three German or Austrian uh, engineers that had come over after the war because they were so good in their fields, mostly automotive work. So the man I was with uh, was in the automotive and I was, did a project with him for my uh, uh, degree uh, work and uh, wrote, had to write a dissertation on that. So that was my training at, at uh, Penn State and I got my master's degree and just stayed on it. And while I was teaching at Penn State, and it was about uh, 10 years later, the Naval Academy had decided to go for accreditation in all their curriculums. And uh, because they were going for it, they had to uh, meet certain, uh, same uh, uh, standards as all other schools, Stanford or MIT, the engineering departments had to, to live, uh, meet the standards of those. So uh, they were hiring about uh, or a number of civilian uh, teachers and I found out about it and my uh, friend told me to go and see them because they were hiring on. So I visited and they uh, gave me an offer I couldn't reject. And uh, so I stayed on there as an associate professor until I retired from there after 30 years. So uh, that, that was in 98, 94. Yeah, I went there in 64 and retired in 94. And then I've been retired since then. And then in 98, my wife died. And then in 2000, I remarried. So uh, that kind of brings me up to date.
well, I'll tell you, I was glad the war was over. I, was, I you know, felt that it was terrible for Japan, but uh, beyond that, I wasn't that intellectual at the time or uh, maybe not spiritually minded enough to, to go much deeper into it. I just say, well, thank goodness it's over.